Welcome to this track number nine, just in case you are in a mood. This is a track focused on supercomputing education, also called Engine Parallel. This session has been organized by Jose Luis and myself. Jose Luis is the head of the Supercomputing Center in Extremadura the director of the Supercomputing Center here in, in León. Um, there will be four presentations in, in this track. One of the papers, uh, one of the authors has not been able to button. So the idea is to make uh, short presentations. I will ask uh, the speakers to spend uh, 15 to 20 minutes for this presentation and then we can uh, have a small break after this presentation. So the, the first presentation is uh, titled Supercomputers in uh, Educational Process and it is uh, presented by Adam Fernandez. So <coughs> I will I show you, in case of, uh, you are not aware of your time, I will show you some cards in the time. Thank you very much. Uh, first of uh, all, I want to thank the organizing committee uh, for letting my group to present the, the result of part of the research. research of my group, uh, thanking in advance the help of the organizing committee. Uh, we are these members, my name is Álvaro Fernández, and the other participants are Camilo Fernández, José Ángel Miguel Dávila, um, Miguel Ángel Conde, and Vicente Matías. We are a group that have been uh, investigating about this phenomenon of uh, education in supercomputing. Okay? Uh, first uh, of all, I want to talk about the aims, the aims of the study. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's very simple. We pretend to uh, describe how important is the implementation of supercomputing in the educational, pro in the educational process. Okay? We have been seeing uh, many lacks in this part of education, in this type of education. Uh, we, we have seen many profiles of people um, that require this kind of, of training. Okay? Uh, maybe in the curriculum of the studies is a lot about the training of supercomputing. So we pretend to show our experience based mainly not just in, uh, in the study of the university but as member of the supercomputing center of Castilla León. Uh, what we pretend is to see the direct interaction between STEM, uh, it's, it's very it's widespread uh, this concept, science, technology, engineering and mathematics and non-STEM uh, subjects. Uh, in other words, how to uh, show subjects related with STEM to non-STEM or non-computing students okay, that we pretend uh, to show in this track. Uh, we are going to divide in four steps. First, I want to make an introduction uh, on what is supercomputing but in terms of uh, what we do uh, training, in the training of supercomputing. Uh, to show you the materials and the method we use uh, to follow this research, the results that we, we have in this, in this research, and finally a, a brief discussion of the results. Well, this is a photo of the, the, the so-called pop corridor of the supercomputing center of Castilla León. Okay? Uh, we are a member of the Spanish supercomputing network, and um, one of the main goals of the supercomputing center, obviously, apart of giving services of calculation, um, virtual machines, and uh, stories of data, is to provide training to, to people. Okay? Many people, especially in, in some areas I'm going to show you, uh, demand this kind of training, and we are providing, uh, since the beginning of the center practically, uh, a lot of uh, training in, diverse, in, a diverse, uh, in a wide range of fields. Okay? This is a resume of, uh, I'm sorry if it's very clear, perhaps it's very small, but I'm going to show you 
and the type of course we have been doing in the supercomputing center of Castilla León. Uh, in the first years of the, the programs of, of supercomputing training, uh, we have a, a variety of fields, you know, related to ICE uh, technology, uh, also related with uh, method, uh, methodology, scientific methodology, uh, engineer, etc. But during the last years, the higher demand is in the field of bioinformatics. Okay, people that is basic, uh, uh, that uh, the basic studies are related to biology, microbiology, etc. That uh, have a lot of knowledge in the fields, but they have the lack of how to use a supercomputer. Okay, in order to know how to train data of genetic or whatever. Okay, so during the last year, we have a lot of demand in these fields. So practically, currently, uh, we are. Uh, offering this type of courses because obviously we need a minimum of, of students and also in this type of courses we have plenty of people attending the courses okay in relation of the profile of people coming to the courses uh, in this uh, short table you can see uh, a, a show uh, of two courses we have okay uh, most of the people is a consolidated research okay people that is studying in a field and they need to make a, a deeper knowledge of, of how to use a supercomputer and they are, uh, as we say, a consolidated research, okay? The other prof profiles are in relation with uh, students of PhD, of doctorate students, and also a uh, doctorate with some experience, okay? But the most important profile is people with experience, uh, with a very, uh, a very wide experience in the field, but that they need uh, how to use uh, to learn how to use a supercomputer. Um, uh, how we do it? We do it like a normal cure, of course, okay? Uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, uh, we have a, a classroom like this, okay? With laptops and computers. Um, students normally have a, a initial session, obviously, of theory, of what is a supercomputer. In fact, the first day, we have classes of Linux, because many people uh, don't know how to use Linux, okay? so they have a lack of experience in this kind of fields related to informatics. Once they have experience and they know how to use Linux, uh, we provide all the infrastructure that is the same that we are, they are going to use in their professional activity. Okay? So they have a connection directly to the supercomputer. And as you can see in these graphs, uh, when we are practicing how to use the supercomputer, the, the, the load of the supercomputer is very high okay? in terms of using calculation. Uh, and obviously the, the way of using, using the supercomputer is the same that you're going to use in your professional uh, activity. Okay? So once they return to the centers, they're going to use uh, the supercomputer like in the same way they are using, using in, the, in the courses. What, what are the type of fields using a supercomputer? A lot of fields. Okay? Many fields in the, in, the in the industry are using supercomputers in the industrial process, okay? But as I told you, uh, in the University of Leon or in the Supercomputing Center of Leon, the, the, the lack of, uh, of knowledge is related to biotechnology, okay? So this is the, the speciality of our center because, uh, of course, if you have an industry, you have a specialist on how, how to use a supercomputer in industrial processes. Uh, a lot of fields, we, we are in these slides, you can see examples of projects we have been working. Uh, we have been working in, work in projects related to cinema. And we have feel, um, also been working in projects related to medicine and biology, especially in the field of genetics. Okay? They demand the use of a big volume of data and they need uh, an infrastructure as we provide in the supercomputing center. In fact, uh, two of the main users normally of our supercomputer are in the area of genetics, are and in the area of methodology, okay, in the physics of the atmosphere, because it's, there are two important groups of this university using the supercomputer facilities we have. So, as normal users are this, but as, as students, we are focusing mainly in students using uh, supercomputing. Uh, they know in order to know how to treat big volume of that. Okay, what we do uh, for this study, we we analyze a lot of uh, we make a, a wide literature review and we finally selected some studies 
uh, from the beginning of the study, we, we have two phases uh, to serve, uh, the first search. Uh, we consulted a lot of databases, professional databases, and we try to uh, focus our main investigation in 35, uh, 34 sorry, uh, final items where we extract all the information we need to have the conclusions we are uh, exposing now. Okay? For the results, we pretend mainly three objectives. First is to study uh, the field we identify of using supercomputing. Okay? We, we analyze all these articles and we pretend to show you uh, how is the, the variety of, of fields using supercomputers. The second is, once we have these fields, analyzing the type of computational, more, more specialized courses in relation of computing that use these supercomputers. And finally, we provide a simple uh, study uh, of relating the first uh, study of uh, fields of knowledge with the courses related to supercomputing. We try to provide and identify with the, the better relation between variables. Okay? In the first step, in the first uh, objective we, we said, I'm sorry because I think that it's very small for the audience. Ah, it's, maybe it's not too Okay, as we can see here, uh, we have identified 51 uh, items or, or notes related to field of knowledge, okay? And as uh, we have seen, sorry, my head, uh, four are related to mathematics, uh, three uh, related to astronomy and astrophysics, uh, eight related to physical, uh, six of chemistry, chemistry, uh, eight life science, um, nine related, related to earth and space science, um, eleven related to science of technology, not just technology in terms of computations, but in relation of drug design, imaging processing, etc. And uh, another like economy, one of the references, and another related to linguistics. Okay, so as you can see in this table, it's a, a wide variety of fields that have been used in supercomputing. It's not just a, just a question of informatics. In fact, I'm going to show you later, we are now in a, in a course, we have a course this week, as a coincidence, and we have just one informatic in the, in the course, because he wants to see how to organize the informatic of the course. But the rest of the people is microbiologists, biologists, medicine, etc. Okay, so, as you can see, we have a wide variety of fields that use supercomputing and need, uh, and not just using supercomputing, but they have identified a need of using a uh, supercomputer. This is the graph of uh, the graph of the of, I have said you. Okay, uh, obviously um, the most important is science and technology, but related to drug design, imaging processing, etc. And another important fields are the, the rest, especially life science, where we can identify biology. Uh, biotechnology, etc. These fields are very important now in the use of supercomputers. And the second objective of the, the second result of the, the study is what we have identified as a type of computational courses related to supercomputing. Okay? Uh, in these tables, uh, that is, is more clear than the other, I <coughs> hope, uh, we have seen a, a great variety okay, of, of type of courses we have identified. One of the most important is programming. Obviously, people need to know how to use a supercomputer, because as I told you, how to use the programs needed for supercomputers. Another important is uh, a variable a variety of courses related to computing. Uh, for instance, HPC technology, scalable computing, matrix calculation, a wide variety of courses, okay? Um, those related to software, how to use Software, because are, there are a lot of software specialized in different fields, okay? Uh, system and architectures of how to use a supercomputing, data management, and a great variety of a lot of courses in different uh, questions, okay? So as you can see here, that there is a, a, big, uh, a big amount of courses that we need to identify, and especially some, something related to parallel computer. That is a, a very difficult field to study and even to find professionals to work in these fields, okay? So, whatever we do in this field is optimizing the services of the supercomputing center. 
And finally, the other, the other objective, the other result of the study was a decent small study. Okay? We pretend to, uh, make, uh, to see the relation between the field and the computational courses. Okay? We have to mix these variables. The dependent variable dependent was the field of, um, the field of knowledge. In this case, we, we merge, we, we unify the fields, and in the first case, um, mathematics, astronomy, and astrophysics, physical and chemistry uh, was inside that, uh, the field that we, we mentioned as engineering, and the others, it is um, life science, earth and space science, science of technology, economy, and linguistic, were uh, included in the first model. Okay? So, we have this, uh, this differentiation in order to have the better uh, results possible. In this first slide, you can see um, the most direct uh, relation in, in the case of science is the programming. So programming is more related with this field of knowledge. And in the case of engineering, we have a, a high relation in computing, but the higher is in this mix of other type of computational courses. Okay? But uh, once we analyze the results, we have concluded that uh, in these two models I have present, um, in model one we have um, a better result in order to predict a value of f, because it's lower than 0 0.05. Uh, this is not a condition of the model two, so we can conclude that uh, for having some conclusions, it's better model one than model two. Okay? This is the same that we can see in this uh, resume of the data, of the information. Okay? As you can see, in this coefficient, R squared adjust is higher in the case of model 1 than in the case of model 2. So the conclusions uh, in this line are, are going to be better in the model 1 than in the model 2. Okay? I'm uh, trying to make a conclusion. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, it's a uh, it's very important to have um, a, a training in supercomputer, in supercomputer because uh, we have seen that an adequate performance of the professionals using uh, supercomputers is based on, on the, the studies they, they have on this, on this question. Finally, I have to, to see that the result we have seen uh, including supercomputers in the learning process in a great variety of fields uh, generates a lot of opportunities to the learners. Okay? Obviously, uh, we have outcomes. In the first case, uh, in the first objective, we see the importance of the supercomputer in many fields. A uh, second objective is to identify clearly uh, how important is the, the use of, super, of computer national courses. And finally, uh, according to Model 1, uh, we appreciate a, a, an important link between the field of knowledge in, re in relation of science and uh, programming. So, programming is very important for this kind of field. Um, we have uh, finally to finish to show you this is an example of um, the, the survey we have once we finish the courses okay as you can see in the green the green circle um, in this first course for instance 15 students they say they say that they appreciate the total of the student the whole of the class they appreciate the initial of the first day uh, showing them how to use Linux so we can conclude that they don't have a, a, a deep knowledge in computational issues, so they need a basic course of Linux in order to know how to use the supercomputer. Okay? And finally, we have good marks in, in the general course we, we provide to the students. And uh, obviously we have some limitations that I'm describing here. Perhaps we need a higher number of studies, perhaps we, we need more data, more information, okay? But um, I, I have some conclusions of the paper. Uh, the most important conclusion is that the improvement, the improvement that provides the training in supercomputers are clear. In fact, many students we have had during this, this period in Leon, in the supercomputing center, uh, have succeeded making projects based, based in, the, in the studies we have, in the training they have in the supercomputing center of Castilla Leon. So I think that this it's all I think I am on time. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Is there any question for the speaker in this case? Any issue? Uh, I will be uh, uh, do you think that this questionnaire that you are using in, the, in this
surveys can be used in another uh, supercomputing centers is it's general enough or they have to be adjusted to to the focus of each of the supercomputing centers? In this case, this is a that uh, only this is a hand a homemade I can say it's homemade survey. This one it's homemade. Okay, uh, we have a greater study uh, that we have to present in another article or manuscript with another another more I want to say. A study survey. Okay, this is a, a, a made by our ourselves with with our own knowledge. Okay, uh, it, it should be better to have a professional survey in order to know exactly uh, how to improve the the result, how to improve the process of of learning. In my opinion, but this is is homemade. I mean, <laughs> are you listening? Thank you. Allah. Next paper is uh, efficiency analysis in code development for high performance computing centers. It will be presented by Javier Corral. Software analyst and researcher at uh, Thenic Computare. Computare is the Computing and Advanced Technologies Foundation of Extremadura. It's a non profit foundation attached to the regional government of Extremadura. And it promotes the, the use of information technology, intense computing, and smart communication as uh, tool for the sustainable socioeconomic development. Uh, its main objective is operate and manage Zenith. Zenith is the Extremadura Supercomputing Technological Innovation and Research Center. It's one, it belongs to one of the 29 singular scientific and technical infrastructure of Spain, that is the uh, Spanish Supercomputing Network. Its objective are promote and provide HPC service and advanced communication to the research communities, companies and institutions who require our services, such as uh, HPC, big data, open data, uh, machine learning, and of course, HPC. Um, so we have currently two, two main supercomputers, uh, which are Lusitania and Lusitania 2, with our main investors for develop uh, all kind of projects. In fact, more than 150 LID projects have been resolved in Phoenix, uh, giving solutions uh, to research lines such as 
uh, precision agriculture and stock breeding, energy efficiency, efficiency, efficiency uh, genetic sequencing and biomedicine, and a lot of them that can be found on, on our website. Okay, uh, parallel programming is a difficult task, especially for for beginners and researchers who, who are from a specific branch of science with have very little to do with uh, computer programming. So, first of all, they have to parallelize their own sequential code, but to do, the, but to do this, uh, they need a high specific knowledge. So, um, the problem is that they, not, they have never been taught how to do this efficiently. This became a problem both for researchers and users and for the administration, administrators who work in, in HPC centers uh, where the efficient use of resources and the efficient performance are always key challenges. The fact is that programmers try to execute the parallel codes as using as many codes as possible, only believing that in this way they, they will achieve better results. Um, without taking into account the efficiency and without taking into account the fact that other researchers are also waiting to, to use this result. This has a significant impact on their performance, especially when regarding applications who need a million CPOs uh, per year. To face this challenge and to help users, we have developed in CERIF an HPC Tense Compiler for the automatic parallelization of sequential code, mainly focused on the management of resources in our HPC Center. Um, in our Tense Compiler, the input code remains changed uh, by, means of, by means of the OpenIP directive. So, its main objective are uh, to achieve an efficient use of HPC resource in order to balance financial costs and energy consumption with the need of achieving resolve as soon as possible. So our current effort are focused on the optimization of sequential of sequential and parallel code fragment by speeding up uh, the execution. So we have selected a set uh, of uh, 26 uh, techniques uh, from the literature, li literature uh, for writing efficient code. And we have analyzed these techniques to reduce uh, execution time. We have uh, made these experiments on an intention and we have compiled all the, all the code with GCC. GCC compiler has four main levels of optimization offered to, to help the, the programmers, the users. From level 0 to level 3. In level, level 0 is the level by default with no optimization for execution time. And to reach the, the level 3, which is the maximum level with the higher optimization of uh, runtime. We have used this algorithm, we have developed this algorithm, and two specific tests were developed for each one of the techniques. In this way, we have a an standard code and an existing code as the result of applying the, the, the technique on the first code, on the standard one. So, we need each test to be repeated 100 million times for this measurement in order to achieve that the runtime reach. Um, a measurable value, so we can uh, discard in this way the, the test function invocation cost. In addition, we also made 10 different measurements uh, in order to minify uh, the impact of call stars and cast effects. This is our stopwatch class. Uh, it's not worthy that this timer has a resolution of around 10 milliseconds and no overhead is incurred by running. So the only latency is incurred when we call the system to get the current time. However, this 
analysis non significant when time and task uh, obtain a position of one more. So we repeat a million of times for, for this reason. Now I'm going to uh, summary the event technique in very briefly. Um, and we can do that uh, later if you want. Um, first technique, the first. Uh, using, uh, we recommend the use of integers instead of this type of detector to, to hold a sequence of, of bits. In the same way, uh, we recommend the, the B set to emulate the array of Boolean elements. Is it advisable in the third technique to avoid the use of cascade function calls when this function return? Uh, pointers or references. In the case of maybe and tables, you see it's the recommended to use loops to the person then instead of using if statement. This technique is one of which achieves the, the best results um, because you can uh, replace a station when you are using this station uh, within loops because you can replace them with uh, a continue or break statement that send the, the same word in a more efficient way. The following technique is the it recommends the, the initialization of variables instead of using the subsequent uh, asymptote when when you are uh, working with this type. Um, I have forgot to mention that you can watch every one of these techniques have, are, are very simple, uh, very few lines of code, but very easy to, to apply for a beginner in, in programming in general, in sequential programming and in parallel programming. The programming or some, or some loop that can be wrong, as you can watch, um, but however, in, in this case, we have uh, we need to take care uh, when applying this technique because it can be um, we can have a problem with the gas uh, due to an increase of the cosine. Uh, while in our technique is passing a structure by reference instead of value, uh, in this case, the efficient code only only pass the, the reference instead of get the value um, later we will uh, watch the, the result of that simple change with a, an structure with only two string and a, and a simple index on the aliasing uh, can be avoided uh, manually by the programmer when conscious expression can be eliminated uh, because it's something that the compiler is not to can do. And finally, in the linear search, when you are using linear search, you can, in some case, uh, regarding the order, uh, you can change the way the four statement with the first the, um, the right um, for a while statement with many um, improvement on the efficiency. So we have uh, four levels uh, for the automatic optimization of um, our code and we want to know uh, how our techniques can improve uh, both the standard code without optimization help with the compiler or offered by the compiler and with the optimization maximum level. So in this case we saw only the result of level zero and level level 3 because the other two levels, 1 and 2, were, uh, didn't uh, improve the result. We achieved an average standard deviation of 1.28% uh, considering all level and technique. And we have two figures to show the, our result. The first one on the left uh, show the runtimes in nanoseconds using the optimization level 3. That is uh, using the maximum help that we can achieve uh, using the, the compiler. So we can watch in the blue bars the standard code using only this uh, optimization 
and the green bars with the efficient code as a result of applying this simple technique on the standard code that we can watch every one of the techniques achieve important reduction of runtime this is in nanosecond in every one of the, of the experiments in the second figure in the, in the right we can watch the percentages of improvement in runtime achieved by applying the efficient techniques with optimization level zero on, on yellow bar and level three on uh, red bar. In this way, we also watch that without optimization level, we also achieve more improvement than um, when applying the, the efficient technique than um, when we don't use the the help uh, offered by the compiler and in fact with the optimization level 3 we achieve better improvement than when the, we don't use the help offered by the compiler so in all this case we have a, an important improvement even reaching the, the total um, percentage of improvement especially regarding this uh, we can um, highlight the extension handling uh, as we commented before or the initialization version versus assignment that achieves in one of the, of the best results the limitations are bigger because there are countless ways to develop the test but we only want uh, one uh, way to demonstrate each one of the techniques uh, so, more than 25 techniques have been uh, extracted from the literature, but we have focused on 10 of them uh, in this paper. Peter Ward is expected to analyze in greater depth the best techniques, evaluate the effects of combining several of them, expand the analysis to other HPC in practice and processors, and use other compilers and programming language with the objective of demonstrating that this technique uh, really can um, achieve uh, higher improvement with other kind of infrastructure or compiler or language. So the time technique has demonstrated effectiveness for writing efficient programming code. All the techniques improve running time and reach, uh, and reach significant percentage percentages of inheritance and the automatic optimization offered by GCC compiler is not enough when regarding to achieve the best uh, the best result, the best efficiency. So programmers should be aware of this kind of uh, technique to improve uh, the program, especially when regarding uh, application who need a million CPU CP hours uh, per year. So it's, uh, we, uh, we have the objective of integrating them into our test compiler so they can detect uh, when a special fragment, a special part of code can be improved by applying each one of these simple techniques. And that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Any question, curiosity, regarding this presentation? I have to. One is a curiosity and the other one is just your opinion. The first one is uh, what type of code have you used for, for your tests? It's a data set publicly available. It's code made for this. We have training. developed each one of this code. I mean, the, the technique have uh, a flow uh, are extracted from the literature, but we have developed all this one, all these tests. Yeah. And these tests are available on on an open uh, publication. So you, you can achieve, uh, you can obtain every one of these techniques, the, the code of this technique. But everyone has a, a complex uh, possible modification that you can do to achieve or to prove uh, um, uh, maybe experiment the technique with other kind of maybe variables or size arise or similar that we are um, we are currently working on it. Uh, and the second one is, 
you mentioned this is for each work that you are thinking of uh, integrating uh, this techniques into advanced compiler. And you are thinking of doing this in the pure sort code, or you are thinking of doing it it's just a curiosity to some kind of intermediate code in the compiler? Uh, the compiler is um, uh, already have uh, achieved. Uh, um, great result in parallelizing for loops. We are focused on, on the for loop parallelization, and we uh, will we have the objective of uh, apply all kind of projects. So the uh, the task compiler can analyze every kind of project, every kind of application we receive in the in the center, and identify when this kind of techniques can be applied. Because the fact is that. In some of these techniques, in these techniques uh, and no compiler can ever do uh, something that the programmer can do with this technique because in running time or in compiling time, um, the compiler never know how to some of these techniques will um, how um, how they do. I mean, uh, a compiler can cannot know uh, how a pointer is um, is working in, in a in a part of the code. So it's the programmer to do uh, the test computer will uh, advise the, the programmer so that the programmer uh, take care of that part of the code that he, um, he can improve. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thank you for your lesson. I have just uh, a doubt about the figure of the research with the GCC and the optimization and not optimization because there are some in some items you uh, have the best results with the uh, GCC just by default and not with the optimization. Yes. What yeah. is that? Uh, it depends. We had uh, we had watch that this depends on the architecture. So we have proved this. Um, uh, we have made this experiment of uh, Raspberry Pi and have uh, um, some result that, in all case, the optimization level three with the GCC compiled achieved lower results than in this case where is the the contrary. You have the better result when you use optimization level three. You have to take in account that uh, in techniques as uh, this fields, the first one, a reduction in the percentage of improvement uh, don't know imply that the runtime of the of application, this technique with optimization level three uh, were uh, worse, but there is only a reduction in the improvement. But if we watch this table, in fact, the runtime of the standard efficient code using the level 3 is always better than all the techniques using level 7. It's the percentage of improvement uh, which changes, but not the, the runtime, which is, only, uh, is also improved uh, in all time. Thank you very much. Their presentation is uh, analysis of users' uh, first contact with Microsoft Most Intuitive and First Approach with uh, a following researcher and will be presented by Emmanuel Tyler. <laughs> Uh, 
review is the most powerful solution in order to get uh, the best results with such algorithms. But the drawback is that uh, using high performance computing requires some skills uh, that may result uh, somehow intimidating for researchers with uh, a small or even no background in ICT. So this work just intends to encourage the use of uh, HPC techniques into the researches with a low background in uh, ICT. We plan to analyze uh, the response of such researchers in order uh, when they are first presented some uh, techniques and, and possibilities, some new techniques and possibilities. Uh, we aim just to find some key indicators which allows us to identify uh, the advantages and the drawbacks that such researchers uh, face when they first approach to high performance computing. How we're going to do it, uh, we have uh, carried out a set of experiments with pathology researchers from the uh, El Postrogan University from Budapest. And we will use a, a three-step methodology. First of all, uh, the researchers will fill out a questionnaire uh, well, uh, that we will use to evaluate their knowledge and their attitude toward high-performance computing. After that, they will have an uh, introductory talk, talk where some core concepts about HPC will be presented. After that, they will fill out another questionnaire. And then in the first step, a subset of the attendees of the introductory talk will, will attend a hands-off course to get some specific uh, knowledge about an application to be used in a high-performance computing environment. Again, after that, uh, they will fulfill a new questionnaire. I will talk later about the questionnaire. <coughs> uh, basically, we postulate uh, three uh, research hypotheses. The first one says that researchers with little or no background in ICTs are usually intimidated when first uh, approaching high performance computing, uh, at least at the first time. Uh, the second hypothesis said that uh, a brief explanation on, on HPC concepts may help to, to them in, to consider using HPC in their research. And then the, the third hypothesis just say that having uh, some basic concepts and some uh, practical knowledge will uh, also uh, we suppose that uh, using HPC will be interesting even more strongly than research which only has uh, a basic instruction. So, in our experiments, we have 29 volunteers from the Tholi department, the University. they are uh, PhD students, postdoc, and senior researchers. They have, they all have. Uh, quite good background in life science, but they have no or minimal background in nursing. During their research, they study the, the behavior of animals. They use uh, an application known as Lab uh, Dog Tracker. Uh, this tool just allows to, to track uh, the location of dogs and humans uh, within the lab. The, the idea of the application is that by using the images of several cameras in the ceiling of the lab, they can uh, have ground truth data about uh, the dogs uh, and the human's location within the lab. Uh, this application is, is, this video analysis is going to be demanding. Uh, just a brief example, a uh, six minute experiment will spend uh, one day uh, if you run the application in a uh, uh, workstation. So it's clear that high performance computing will be very very useful to, to, to such researchers. So we also uh, come with a with a high PC environment, specifically Calendula from the Supercomputation Castilla. Uh, and it will be accessed by using the, uh, 
uh, as learn as well. For the evaluations, we are going to, to have three questionnaires, as I have said you before. They are all based on the Kip Patrick's evaluation model, but uh, of the four levels that this evaluation model has, we will, uh, this study uh, will focus on the first uh, two levels, which has to do with the reaction and the learning of the participants. For the other levels, we will need more time, uh, probably uh, several years. Right? The idea is the, that the responses uh, to on the questionnaires will provide us information about the uh, drawbacks and also the possibilities that uh, such researchers receive on the using of high performance activity. In addition to the questionnaires, we have two learning activities, the introduction talk, and the hands off course. Regarding the outline, the researchers will be divided into the Two groups. Uh, each group will follow a different outline. The idea is that the first group will attend to the introductory talk, while the second will attend the introductory talk and uh, the hands on course. And regarding the questionnaires, uh, the first one gathers some demographics data uh, and, help, and help us to establish uh, a baseline of the aptitude and the previous uh, knowledge of these research uh, researchers regarding the HPC. The second one uh, allows, uh, allows us to, to measure uh, how the introductory talks first on the first two, level, two levels of the Kilpatrick's model. And then the, the third questionnaire also measures the first two levels in the Kilpatrick models. But in this case, we can have the, the we can see the effect uh, of the whole stack. I mean, we can see the effect after uh, attending an introductory talk and after having some specific uh, HPC knowledge. Well, uh, I will show you the, <coughs> the results of the first questionnaire. The, the three first charts on top uh, so the distribution between gender, age and status of the volunteers the fourth one in the top so uh, the ICT skills perception uh, you know they, they almost half of the, of the researchers think that they are bad or very bad Regarding the programming skills, it's even worse. More of, most of them uh, doesn't know anything about programming. They don't have any confidence in using HPC. Uh, just a few, just a few ones are planning to use HPC in their research, and um, yes, they are quite interested in having uh, a hands of training. Uh, we have. Uh, ask them uh, what they think that high performance computing is, and we have had a lot of funny, funny, funny answers. This is just uh, some of them. They they say things like everything is fast. I never had to fit. Computing big data. Many computer working network. So you see, they don't have really uh, an accurate vision of high performance computing. So. After the introductory attack, uh, they were uh, they were they fill out the, the second questionnaire. Uh, this uh, this chat so the their impression about the presentation itself and also uh, about the presenter. They are quite happy with them. You have the details there. I'm not going to go in that there. And they also uh, would recommend the presentation to other researchers. These other results are more interesting. Um, most of the participants in the introductory talk, after the introductory talk, they consider that they understand at least the core HPC concepts. Most of them are uh, 
uh, are planning to use HPC in their research and also uh, make a follow-up research and most of them, as you can see, are interested uh, interested in having the hands-on training. So, in conclusion, uh, I will talk about the first two hypotheses. Regarding the, the understanding of HPC conflicts, we have, we come from, I never heard of it, and now uh, most researchers uh, at least uh, say that they uh, understand the most important concept regarding HPC. If, if we look at the uh, update plans on using HPC, we, have, uh, we also can see that after later trade-off, most of them uh, could be interested in using it. And regarding the interest uh, in, uh, in that uh, training, you can see also that even they were quite interested at first, now after the intro trade talk, they are more interested in how most uh, and in their training in HPC. And regarding the work in progress, this is a work in progress, we haven't finished our analysis. Uh, we now want to see uh, the results after the hands-on course. Uh, the second group uh, has attended to the hands-on course and they have filled the, the, the third question, but that was uh, last week. So we haven't analyzed all the data uh, by now. And, uh, and we can uh, say that the third hypothesis is, is, is by We guess we expect this. And this is it. So if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer. Any question for the speaker? This is a particular area we focus a group of researchers which in a very specific area, and this is uh, for me. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, this? Is, this could be extended to other types of uh, researches in the same field in life or in science? I think in life science in particular, but in many other science, uh, there is a drawback regarding the, the instruction that people need in order to use uh, an HPC environment. It's true that in some areas like bioinformatics, uh, they use us, but it is because they have a lot of uh, ICT instruction in their degrees. Uh, in meteorology, for instance, uh, there is uh, a huge use of, of, of high performance computer, but they usually need a, a, a specific expert. You know that the, the, the meteorology projects that you have in Skyle, uh, the software, I have to develop the software for them because they, they have the ideas, they know it was good, but they don't have the knowledge to, to, to apply that. So if they want to, to not rely all the time in, in ICT professionals, they will need, they will need uh, to improve their ICT uh, training in order to use it. Because it's not true. That I, I'm not talking about programming because of course, it's very difficult. I mean, just me using uh, most user, users that doesn't even know how to use a, a Linux terminal, uh, doesn't know what Slurm is. So you need uh, a very basic uh, format uh, instruction for, for a big amount of researchers. Any other questions or issues? Thank you. Presentation is uh, facilitating the learning process in parallel computing by using Eastern Messaging and will be presented by Lydia Sanchez.
and I, then I will uh, present the results and the conclusions. Okay, nowadays uh, everyone is aware of the technology that we have and we know that we can do everything with our mobile or from our home and everything is connected. But although we know all these robots and so on, our students keep programs uh, for the sequential model the sequential <coughs> computer. So the thing is, they have to think in parallel. So this skill is not easy to achieve and even is difficult also to, to measure if they have acquired this, this skill. So there are people who just uh, measure the final result, they do an exam, if they pass, uh, uh, they have acquired this skill and if not, they, they, they don't. Other measure the work that they have been de delivering during their lessons and also you have to measure how they work in team uh, because nowadays you know uh, everyone has to work with more people. So we have uh, considered the instant messaging application in order to, to, to use it as a tool for the practical assignment of the, of the site. Why? Because the students are very active users of this technology. Uh, they use this technology even more than phone or email. And even they don't con consider this as a technology. If you say, okay, we are going to use this application, they say, well, it's a common way to communicate. So for them, uh, it's a very good tool to increase the uh, participation and also the, the interactivity with the other students. However, there is a big <laughs> robot that is a distraction. If they are playing with their mobiles, I don't know if you are in the lessons and you do a um, Kahoot or a Socrative, they take their mobiles and then you don't know very well if they are working with, uh, with uh, the questionnaire or they are doing other things. So this is a, a big drawback. Uh, about the method, we have uh, considered one study that is in the first year of the master's degree at, uh, in computer science here in, in Leo. Uh, it's named High Performance Computing and which teach them how they can run in parallel with OpenMP, MPI uh, and CUDA and also some topics about architecture and more things but uh, we are talking about file programming especially. And uh, we do a collaboration with the University of Groningen in the Netherlands uh, because my uh, supervisor of my thesis is a uh, teacher there of the parallel computing side, so we, uh, during some years, we share uh, assignments and we measure how they are doing uh, in order to uh, to do like the same subject in two different universities. Okay. Uh, the University of Groningen is quite uh, the top hundred of university and Leon is not so high. <laughs> so this is a, a chance to, to, get, to get this knowledge to here. Okay, we, we have a practical assignment in this subject that they have to solve a, a real problem and they have to use parallel programming. Uh, the problem was uh, originally uh, written in, in Fortran but now it's translated to, to C. And uh, basically, they have to use a boundary element method that is quite similar to the finite element method that maybe is most known. And they have to solve a thermoelastic problem uh, between three dimensional solids. Uh, the code is already written, so they, they have this sequential code. And basically, uh, what they, this code does is to merge the solids uh, into elements and then. Uh, some coefficients are computed, uh, they have to solve uh, integrals from one element to, to another, so you have n elements, you have to do n square integrals, and also there are more computation, like in some cases these elements have to be subdivided into a smaller elements, so you have more computation to do, and also you can consider symmetries, so either your program, uh, after your uh, program is defined just for one square, maybe you have four times integrals to do because it's uh, symmetric to both things, for example. So all this computation uh, can be run on parallel. 
And also, with this number of more things, uh, an equation system is built and it's, it has to be solved. Uh, one for the thermal problem and one for the thermoelastic problem. So these are the, the main uh, topics of this code. And the equation system is, um, is a, a good candidate to be run on parallel because there are many techniques that we study during the lessons. So they can apply these techniques to this uh, code. And also the coefficient computation is independent. It's a double uh, for loop. Um, you have to do some intervals, analytic if it's the same element uh, or numerical if it's different element. And then you have to, uh, to you can do this uh, on parallel because they are independent. So this is the sequence algorithm that they have. And they have to use uh, different libraries like OpenMP, MPI, CUDA, OpenCL to run this code in, in, in parallel. And they have to work as a team. So we are using the methodology comprehensive training model of the teamwork for competency. And uh, they have to decide uh, how can they uh, approach this, uh, this problem. And we are using the Scalis and Lendulas for Computer Castelio uh, to run the, the program from parallel. In the case of uh, CUDA and OpenCL, we use a local server that we have in our lab so they can connect and use the GPU that is there. Uh, to do this, we have used the GitHub uh, repository for the code and the Gitter for instant messaging. And we consider five chat rules. One for objectives, uh, because we give them the sequential code and say, okay, now you have to apply to this sequential code all the things that you have seen during the lessons, during the practical lessons. And uh, then they have to decide what they want to do. Like, for example, okay, we are going to use OpenMP to run on parallel this for loop, and we are going to use a library to use to do the system, the solution, the, the equation of uh, the system equation solution and so on. And depending on the number of people, they have to decide what, are, what they want to do and they have to do it. So this uh, chart room um, is for these uh, objectives. And the ones that they are identified, like the final goals, are written in a week. So everyone knows uh, which are the objectives of the, of the work. Also, there is uh, another chat room about responsibilities. That means who is in charge of each uh, task to do. That this doesn't, this doesn't, doesn't mean that this is the only people or the only student that is going to work there. It's the, the people that is in charge. So if someone has a problem, everyone needs to help uh, to everyone, okay? because they are working on, on a team. Also, there is a chat for planning where uh, they decided uh, what they are going to do first, how much time uh, it's going to take, and so on. And also, we have to do a Gantt uh, planification uh, and everything that is going to be gathered in a, in a wiki. Also, they have a chat room for the norms. That means, uh, for example, let's say, okay, if you are working, you have to answer uh, before five, five hours of a message. <coughs> or you have to every day upload some code or whatever. They, they put their notes so they can uh, follow everyone that everyone is working and so on. And finally, there is a chat room for the execution where um, the students discuss about the errors they are having, the problems they are having, and, and all of them are uh, helping them to, the, to achieve the solution. In all the rules, also... Uh, the ...with this kind of translation, because sometimes words in English is, is different, obviously, in, in Portuguese, so if you have some problems with this translation, because sometimes it doesn't mean the same, you know, sometimes it could be a different meaning, so do you have difficulties to translate? 
uh, I didn't find uh, uh, more difficult in translate, mm -hmm. but uh, some questionnaires that I see in the literature, some of the questions I can't apply to my case okay. because it's related to another country mm -hmm. and it doesn't apply to Portugal. Okay. So we need to do to select yeah. the the things that uh, can apply. be applied. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so Carlos, it's you. If us, please. Thanks so much. I'm starting the time.
So remote labs complete satisfy three of the set of the um, objective learnings. Experiment, device experiment approach, specify equipment, procedures, implement this process, interpret the, 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 the data, and so on, so on, so on. Learn from failure. This is one objective. It's not something we should avoid, okay? Identify outcomes due to faulty equipments, parts, code, and programming. Um, build up, process the org, design, and re-engineer the solution in order to obtain the desired effect and so on. The activity is your field. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrate appropriate lives of independent transparency capability and real world problem solving. So all these um, objectives can be achieved with uh, remote labs. When what we have in real labs, we have components. This is my way of doing things. I have several packets. Inside each packet, we have several components. I distribute the components by each group of students and in the end I want to return the same package and the same package should be prepared to be <laughs> sent to the next group. It's hard. I said please send me back the package in the very same condition as I gave them. Second, please Pass me again, returning the packet in the same conditions as I pass you. Third, please return me the packet in the very same conditions I pass you. Clear. At the end of class. Professor, we have some components here in the bedroom. Could we can put in some? No! <laughs> In fact, I try to don't have uh, a lot of waste because uh, typically they, 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 they put the components out of the place and so on and uh, in the end we must put everything in the trash. This way I have the same components during a lot of years. A lot, I think, five, seven years. I have the same components. Well, sometimes they burn it and you have to replace them. Most of them are the same. And what happened? This. <laughs> 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 A lot of manipulations they broke. Okay, and then um, we have no chance to, to avoid this kind of things. Okay, the same in the transistors. It's very much more often because the transistors they broken very and very easily. Uh, Integrated circuits. The, the pins sometimes they are bent. If you try to put in this correctly, they broke. Mm -hmm. but, we have this. And um, what we have in terms of alternative for this part, remember, for this part only, we can have the VC remote lab. Uh, wait, what is the VC remote lab? It's a platform in which we have everything in terms of uh, component, in terms of, of um, instruments, hardware, or supply, or meter. Uh, oscilloscope, function generation, so on, they are okay, located here. Okay. We have components, okay. When we build up the circuit, what we have? Instruments, components, and we connect them in a, a way. And this connection may form a, a, a matrix of a switch, okay? <coughs> what the, the students did, they have this virtual uh, breadboard, they placed components there, okay, in the correct way. We have here, oh, it's a hint out for you. this is the power supply, this is function generator, oscilloscope, and multimeter, okay. We drag the components from right here, we make some connection, and then you click perform experiment. That, in, in this very exact moment, the, the, all this setup is sent for a real experiment for platform. The experiment was performed, really performed, not simulated, really performed, and 
the data were returned for student. Everything less than one second. Less than one second. Okay? That means you can have several students, when hundreds of the students make the same because you can use the very same platform for a lot of students. Okay? Uh, of course, if you fail something, the system says no, you are in the correct way. So redesign because you are making um, bad things. Okay, and in this way, we don't burn out <laughs> components because you have only one chance, or you do it right, in the right way, or the the, the 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 experiment is not performed. So we don't have trash in this view. Okay, I'm not saying it's not important the hands on. Um, classes. Yes, they are important. The thing is, after some sessions, when the students want to say what if, what if, what if, they don't, uh, they don't learn more about oscilloscope and so on. No, they, they have skills good enough. They are just trying what happened according to theory and so on. Oh, I increased the resistor and what happened? Yeah, it makes sense, okay. But this, for this kind of things, I think that this kind of lab could be some advantages, okay? Uh, we have here an experiment, and we have already um, talked about this, okay? And components are key, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Now we have seen an experiment, it was performed by a colleague mine, in fact, should be Ricardo, should make this presentation, but for well, reasons he can be present here. Okay, this is the circuit and so on and so on and so on. We perform the circuit, okay? And we have the very same circuit mounted key, okay? This is a virtual um, breadboard and we have the virtual oscilloscope and the virtual multimeter, okay? If you can change, change something, you can simply change the resistance and you can see in reality, let's say in nature, how the system um, changed his behavior. Okay. Um, not that I'm talking about one system, a lot of experiments. Same system working in so called batch file, batch mode. That means the systems talk with you, or maybe I'm talking another, and with you. We made some experiments in the past, help me how many uh, experiments we tried to make at the same time, more than 100? Yes. Yeah. More than 100. We tried to to, <laughs> to make some some mistakes in the system, and you say no. At noon, I don't tell you it was. But everybody make the same experiment, okay? <laughs> okay. And the system works well. 100 guys try to make the same experiment at the same hour, same minute, and so on, and the system completely <laughs> um, work well, okay? So, and this is the worst you can do with 100 experiments at a time now, okay? Mm -hmm. And it didn't fail. In fact, everything worked fine. So, in the regular situation, you don't have full time 100 situations, okay? That means you can have one 100 platform, okay, serving a huge community, okay? It's different. So, first slide was one guy, a lot of instruments. <coughs> this Vision is one set of instruments, a lot of capital. <clears throat> I would like to emphasize that this kind of platform as they intend to replace hands on. So, cost analysis, what we have, this is the cost we have more or less in one bench, okay? <clears throat> Let's consider the cost of this is something about. Mm -hmm. 10,000 euros, this is the compass, constant cost and uh, how, must, how much bench costing this amount should we have? This is the linear, okay? That means for something around 22 students for this strictly point of view a vizier is best, is better than a bench or give it back only 22 students, okay? But of course, this is important for 22, I'm talking about seven hundreds or thousand of students, okay? Conclusion, 
Uh, the experimental work is funded to the fundamental for engineering, engineering courses, especially for the electric ones. Why? Because we don't see nothing about electricity, we don't see nothing. Okay? We are completely blind. Hands on are usually associated with a lot of components, waste, and a lot of equipment. And uh, we must uh, see that a lot of equipment are very often they are broken. Oscilloscope don't because they are high impedance and so on. Because they are monit monitoring, uh, let's say, instruments. But when we have acting instruments, let's say, power supply okay, and, uh, and, uh, and function generated, um, very often they, they, they broke. Remote that can, for this strictly point of view, um, <coughs> overcome this, uh, this, this kind of, of, of problems. It is, it is a very good platform, uh, it's, let's say something robust, okay? And in this case, uh, it demonstrates that the using of a, a remote lab from this point of view, I emphasize, is then done, um, <coughs> done um, a, a bench, okay? I would like to see you, uh, tell you that uh, we have in our institution, is airport, they have come in very, uh, let's say, it's not very far from, from, from here. We talk about a uh, very short distance. I would like to invite you to participate in this, in this conference. Okay, you will have some, some, some information in the, in the, in the, in the desk. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Discussion? Yeah. Discussion. So let's work with uh, real components in, in one time to know what, what this is and then they will replace them to use the, the virtual laboratory. But this is not a virtual, this is really real. That means we have components in the platform, real components, real instruments, everything is real. The access is visible. The access, the only thing is, is, is remote is the access. It's not, it's, this is, we are not talking about virtual, because <coughs> virtual we have models. And uh, I don't have a very good definition of models. It should be models, something abstract that represents something real. Okay, not real. <laughs> um, something effective. Okay, we can have models. <coughs> Economy models of uh, resistance, model, yeah, okay. but the way how the model reacts depends on the way you build up your model. Okay, we have very good models, okay, and very poor ones also. And uh, when we make some experiment, sometimes people say, "Yeah." For instance, some years ago I try a simulator and so on. Everything was fine, and then I realized I <laughs> forgot to put the power supply. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if I was a student? <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, it's work. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I forget to put the power supply in fact to operation amplifier and so on works well. Okay, no, no, no. I don't believe in most. This is problem, okay? When I talk with nature, I'm in trouble because or you fail to make everything right. Or you have no chance. Because it's real, okay? We so have components in the platform, okay? Mm -hmm. You, you, you design your experimentation, okay? You are not taking time, okay, to the platform, you do it zero, okay? And then you click perform experimenting. That way, from this moment on, the information is sent for platform. Could be next room, could be in Sweden, could be <laughs> in Brazil and so on. You never know. Sometimes you don't know. No, I don't say never. You, sometimes you don't know where the, 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 exp the experiment were performed, okay? They connect, they measure, they make everything, and they send you back the results. But I, I think the question is different. 
Did the students previously contact with those components? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They know what are the components, or is it the first time they are Dep going to depend on set the experiment of. and understand what I, I don't know what IOP is or so on? Depend on the set of, of the, the the class. In my class, first we make the let's say theoretical approach, then we go to the simulator, okay, and then we go. To the, to, the, to the workbench, and then we have... The important components. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's the fun part. But for example, in the previous presentation, yes. I see something strange, because they invert, yeah, first they may they, they go for the remote class and after they go for yes, but because why because my students they are first year students and it's their first contact with the and the the components so they are very afraid to burn components and to use a multimer to measure current so i put them to work before in the remote lab yes. they do everything they don't they are not afraid of burning components everything yes. works if it's if it's wrong it the won't work. work. It won't work. It's, it's not correct. Yes. It doesn't work. It doesn't say what is the mistake. They have to yeah. think yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the hands-on lab, the traditional lab, they feel much more at ease. And uh, it's yeah. not just my opinion. Some other researchers have the work in this yeah. area. And they think that mm -hmm. we can be what we have called an uh, hands-on facility. The students are more at ease. I understand then that we have two points. First, the students, when they are the beginning, yep. um, they are having experience and are afraid, so this can help them to... to develop it's not my view, it's a view of oh. my colleague. But <laughs> second, is, um, you fail and you fail, but you are learning about that without um, a, 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 a high cost. Yes. 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 Yes.
and yours. I, I, I don't know, I try, we'll try later to talk with our colleague like of the system. What is one platform also in Russia? Okay. And uh, if we are more people using this platform, you can share the experiment. It's the new, the new, the new challenge. The main idea is if I have, uh, so the, let's say, a very simple um, experiment with um, halfway ratification. If this experimentation is working in my system, why are you, <laughs> let's say, um, have limitations in your system because we have limitations in terms of number of components, okay? If the, the, this experience is in your system, I don't do, I don't want to experiment in my in my in my in my platform. I prefer you use, use yours, okay? And as you see we can have a, a lot of experiments from people that have already built up some experiments you can share this kind of Experiments, okay. This is a new thing we are trying to be a platform this year in terms of more in terms of federation. The main idea is instead of you make the, the, this experiment in your system, okay, you end in the federation and <laughs> for this system you are using the Sweden system, okay. For another experiment you are using the Spanish, but you never know. The only thing you know is that the experiment takes place. Real, mm -hmm. where well, doesn't matter because nature has something equal in Spain and Sweden. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so I think that from these presentations and maybe from the one that you have done yesterday, and I was listening to it, uh, I guess that uh, we can conclude that students. I prefer the hands-on approach, mm -hmm. and this is very important, either if, if it is in the classroom or if it is in the field. And, uh, well, this poses some challenges because we have big classes. Nowadays, we have many times 40 students, so how to handle this? How can we cope with this? Because we don't have only one class. We have many, several classes with 40 students each. So it's not very easy to uh, prepare all this work and then to analyze, to re receive their feedback and uh, uh, give them also some feedback on what they have given us because they want to know if they have failed, if what they have done is important to something and doing their share, the, the thing that you were talking about, the energy literacy, um, I think that's one very interesting point because nowadays we listen to students making some, uh, um, how to say, um, uh, well, they go to somewhere, they don't go to classes because they claim they want to be more sustainable, they want us to be more sustainable, but then look at what they are doing and they are spending much more energy than they should they leave all their apparatus on, so this is very difficult, yeah. But in this way, the students um, can be in their room mm -hmm. and they are making real experiments, okay? Yes. And they are, in my view, they are very comfortable to, to make mistakes, okay? Yeah. Because they are doing private, mm -hmm. okay, not in public, way. for instance, when the test to make the presentation, yes, this is I never thought about it. Could make sense oh, to, rever that? to reverse mm -hmm. the order yeah. of so this thing. It was a bit strange for me. I never mm -hmm. thought about it. Perhaps it should be better you know, to gain some some confidence and some. It depends on the students. Yes, But the, the, the main goal it was not talking about this year, but talking about sustainability, as I said, we have one system for a lot of people, okay? The second point, we hardly we have waste because the, 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 the preparation of the experiment only allows you to do it, the experiment in the right way, okay? In this way we have less, um, 
best way, how far away you should have hands-on ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is not a replacement. No, yes. it's not. Okay. So, okay. more questions? I have a lot of questions. I'm glad to put everything <laughs> working. <laughs> And I think they are anxious to go to coffee break. <laughs> so we must make some 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 um, challenge for the new, the, new, the new team. Yeah. We are trying to have this track uh, let's say every year. Yeah. The main idea is to challenge people to share some experiments, share some experience with us, okay? How do you teach sustainability? How they react? How they react? Because uh, in fact, uh, teaching something in this way is not easy. Childhood is, is, is simple, okay? But um, for some reason, during the way it is not. Mm -hmm. Remember my, my son has his kid and so much because completely <laughs> Enthusiastic about uh, uh, everything related with sustainability. And today, it takes one hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> with the water open. <laughs> so what happened? It doesn't pay the bill. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't. You have to show. The thing is that you have to show. They have to to have evidences of what is happening. Uh, nowadays they are very visual, yes? So if you don't show them, it doesn't happen. It's a matter of, it a matter of <laughs> principle. Every time we go to the bathroom, it's, 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 something is crazy because uh, in the summer the, the lights are always turned on, okay? It was a sun day, we have plenty of light inside of the bathroom, and yet the lights are not, and no one cares. Many students they can't come in and come out and okay, relax, okay. And then I enter up. I think is why I am aware and they are not. But if we have a conversation, this is for you. Yes, they answer everything correct and correct. They know what to question. do, but they don't yeah. practice. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think you people are very aware of that nowadays. I think so. Yeah. Some some of them. Yeah. It's a new generation now. The new? I don't know. The, the bathroom still. <laughs> 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 you have to love when it's special. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Sure. So, please, say the pilot. Anything on our shower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Old, right? Yes, yeah. it's 15 okay. years old. <laughs> no, no, my son is 22 years old, this is not a problem. Yes, the Yes. not So, next Practice year, I you hope to see you again yes. here. Yes. Not here, probably. Not here. Will not be so in the audience. I <laughs> challenge you all, you all, to come back, to to this come back and bring some friends and some people with this kind of concerns. Maybe next time I'll bring Sustainability and education is something very difficult. We have a lot of conferences in sustainability. We have, one. Uh, we have a lot of conferences in education. We have very few words in sustainability education. Okay? Very few words. Okay? It's a multidisciplinary task. Okay? So um, I'd like to have more. Yeah. Yeah. Your so, I, I would like to thank you all for attending this session. No, no, the best session, the best track mm -hmm. of this course. Course. <laughs> the best session. Uh, there is no other session. <laughs> there is no other session. In this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, this I will be you. the best session after we have a cup of coffee because <laughs> I still didn't have my coffee. Yes. <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed. This was a little bit, well, informal because I think yeah. this must not be a formal thing. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. <coughs> Next time, hope to meet you again. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope to see you all. Thank you.